how desoxin acts as cardiotonic in heart failure desoxin is a cardiac glycoside so it is a natural glycoside coming from the distal species chemically it is having a structure like this and one of the important nucleus it is having is the steroidal nucleus and this steroidal nucleus is going to be connected with the five membered lactone ring which is unsaturated and third important feature of this desoxin because it is a glycoside it is going to be attached with a sugar moiety now this sugar is made up of the glucodesoxose units in this way desoxin is a steroidal cardiac glycoside which is acting like a cardiotonic so in this video we will see how it is going to act as a cardiotonic and used in the treatment of heart failure so suppose this is the cardiac membrane and this is the outside of this membrane and this is the inside of this membrane and during the action potential generation within the membrane sodium is going to enter into the membrane where it causes a depolarization of this cardiac cells so this phase what we call the phase 0 and phase 0 is followed by again the entry of the calcium into the membrane which actually responds for the force of contraction of the heart this phase is called phase 2 plateau phase and finally the repolarization of this cardiac membrane is mediated by the potassium ions which are going outside of this membrane this phase is called phase 3 complete repolarization phase in this way ions can enter into the cardiac membrane and go out of the cardiac membrane to bring the depolarization as well as the repolarization but once this action potential is complete how these ions are going to be restored we have seen that sodium and calcium are entering into the cardiac membrane and potassium is going outside the membrane how they again be restored such that sodium and calcium are going again out of the membrane and potassium is coming inside the membrane so this should happen in order to bring another action potential because ions should be restored after the action potential but at the same time on restoring these uh, ionic levels the membrane potential should not be changed this is carried by a few of the specialized systems electro neutral pumps such type of pump that is present on the cardiac membrane is the sodium potassium ATPase pump this pump will pump the sodium ions which are entered into the membrane during the phase 0 to the outside of this membrane at the same time this pump can bring the potassium which is on the outside into the membrane where it is going to restore the potassium levels in this way sodium potassium ATPase pump will work such that sodium is going outside and potassium is coming inside without any change in the membrane potential and this pump is also working in coordination with the another pump that is the sodium calcium exchange pump this pump will bring few of the sodium ions again in, into the membrane at the same time few of the calcium ions are going outside the membrane now these two pumps are working together so that they will bring the potassium inside and they will transport the sodium and calcium outside of the membrane to restore the ionic levels within the cardiac membrane and one of the interesting point is that these pumps will not change any membrane potential and the membrane potential remains constant even these pumps are going to transport the ions across the membrane now here the desoxin is going to show its action on one of these pump that is a sodium potassium ATPase pump so desoxin is going to bind to the potassium binding site on the sodium potassium ATPase pump and inhibits the activity of this pump. So desoxin is competitively inhibiting this pump by competing with the potassium and because of this inhibition of this pump it increases the intracellular sodium levels. So, so sodium is going to be accumulated as this pump is not working because of inhibition by desoxin as the intracellular sodium levels are going to be accumulated this can inhibit the sodium calcium exchange pump which actually brings the sodium into the membrane as already intracellular sodium levels are more sodium cannot enter again into the membrane this pump is going to be inhibited now when this pump is going to be inhibited this results in the increased intracellular calcium levels within the membrane the raised intracellular calcium levels increase the force of contraction of the heart now let us see how desoxin is going to act on the cellular level so desoxin is going to increase the intracellular calcium levels by inhibition of the sodium potassium ATPase pump 
these calcium ions are going to be stored into the sarcoplasmic reticulum which is acting like a storage for the calcium ions within the cardiac membrane and these calcium ions then going to enter the sarcoplasmic reticulum where they are going to be stored and this sarcoplasmic reticulum is equipped with the few of the receptors which are the rhinodin receptors these rhinodin receptors when they are activated they can release the calcium out of this membrane in this way desoxin increase the intracellular calcium stores within the cardiac membrane now when the impulse is going to be achieved the cardiac membrane it activates the sodium channels so sodium channels are going to enter into the cardiac membrane which produce the depolarization during the phase 0 and this phase 0 is followed by phase 2 where the calcium ions are going to be entered into the membrane this calcium which is entered into the membrane is not directly responsible for the force of contraction of the heart but it is going to activate the rhinodin receptors which are present on the sarcoplasmic reticulum now when this calcium acts on the rhinodin receptor it will release the calcium from the sarcoplasmic reticulum and by action of the calcium on the rhinodin receptor a large amount of the calcium is released into the cardiac membrane this released calcium can form a complex with the troponin to form the calcium troponin complex troponin is actually acting like a physiological block between the actin and myosin filaments and when this is block is going to be removed the actin and myosin can slide on each other to bring the cardiac contraction in this way desoxin increase the intracellular calcium stores which are released sufficiently when an impulse is used the cardiac membrane in this way desoxin can increase the force of contraction of the heart but why it is called as cardiotonic so desoxin already we have seen it is going to increase the force of contraction but at the same time desoxin is going to decrease the rate of contraction so that's why desoxin is called as cardiotonic so increase the force of contraction what we call positive inotropic effect and decrease the rate of contraction is called negative chronotropic effect so here the interesting point is that Desoxin is increasing the force but quite oppositely decreasing the rate of contraction. The increase in the force of contraction of the heart of by desoxin is because of the inhibition of the sodium potassium ATPase pump. As already we have seen, by inhibition of this pump, the intracellular calcium levels increases, which increase the force of contraction. But at the same time, desoxin is going to decrease the rate of contraction of the heart because it increases the vagal activity, that is a parasympathetic activity. By increasing the parasympathetic activity, it decreases the atrioventricular conduction, that is the AV conduction, thereby rate of contraction of the heart is going to be decreased. In this way, desoxin is really acting like a cardiotonic. Tonic is the drug which increase the force of contraction. It really increase the force of contraction, but actually it is going to decrease the rate of contraction. So it's not a cardiac stimulant, it is a cardiotonic, which won't increase the force of contraction. As it increases the force of contraction, it increases the cardiac output and blood supply to the systemic organs, so it can be used in the treatment of the heart failure. So that's about the mechanism of desoxin, how it can be used in the treatment of heart failure.